by government. It's actually something you would want to do because their productivity could be proven and they would earn it, help you run a school more efficiently. But when they just have a radio, they don't have anything. The forgotten worker, it's all about, well, what are the them? That's why we get into this squabble about minimum wage. So Teatro has reinvented the local revolution for the Olympic hourly workers. We've created this concept of, if I put a little virtual assistant in my ear, think of Alexa or Siri from Amazon or Apple. In my ear, my little virtual assistant, both of those virtual assistants, consumer base, are not very useful, right? They're more for gaming and fun and so forth. They're, they're getting better. But if I put one in my ear that actually just helped me do my job better, whatever it was, and so forth, we deliver it on this little mobile computer right here. This little IoT device that we give to our customers. I plug an earbud in here and I stick it in my ear, and I'm connected. I can stick in my pocket. I'm connected to network at all times. I can reach any of my teammates, and I can access any of my information systems using my voice. So this concept that we're pioneering here's a, here's a good way to understand some of the capabilities: is I can use it to connect with other people. If I wanted to talk to John. I'm going to send a couple of John. I want to do a message. You can have a they have one on our system. Right? I can use it to check inventory. I can look up price. What's my break? What's my next tax? Any of the things that you could do on a mobile device like this, I can actually do using my voice while I'm moving and my eyes are still focused on customers and my hands are free. I'm instantly and continuously connected to a network. All of the things that we struggle with today, that like line on line, pick up the store, loyalty, task, human capital, merchandising, can all become a lot easier if you actually know where every employee is at all times while they're in the store. It's a completely new concept that we're pioneering that's proven to be incredibly successful. Imagine this. Imagine what it would take if every associate to answer any question a customer had, even on their first day. That sounds like a high bar, right? Well, if I have a virtual assistant in my ear, and I could ask my assistant any question about it, and they could answer that question, I could do it on my first day. Right? That's possible. I don't care if I put all that information on a tablet and I give it to an employee, customer asked a question on the first day, there's no way they could actually look it all up fast enough for a customer to tolerate that kind of wait period. So voice is actually the future of computing. And we're pioneering this new concept, but a lot of focus on, focus on consumer. The after is the second to in this new space on enterprise. Mobile access has proven with many of our customers to do four things. One, increase revenue. Your increased conversion, reduction in abandonment, and so forth. Two, increase uh, increased labor productivity, running the store with less labor, because you know where everybody is, they're connected to people all the time. Employees love it, and customers love it, because the service goes up. We've got very strong data that show that mobile access, I don't care how you do it, you just get everybody connected all the time, and you create the applications that are useful for providing service, the results will follow. When we all got mobile devices like this, our productivity went up 30 to 50 percent. If you didn't do your job today without email, without voicemail, without your cell phone, and you had to use the old landline phone and in our office now, your productivity would go down by 50 percent, I would guarantee you. That's the world of most hourly workers today in a hotel, a restaurant, an airport, and so forth. Here's some of the leaders that are unlocking the potential of these hourly workers. That will lead the vision of exploring this new frontier that the actor was pioneering. And when we had a minute left, I wanted to play a video, just a quick video of one of our customers and tell you a little bit about what the actor is doing. I'm John Trio, I'm the executive vice president of IT, and this is John Dorn Container. You know, one of the mobility solutions we've, we've tried really revolve around the screen. And the power of the actor is that it is something that is a heads up technology that employees use while they are working on the sales floor and looking and seeing what's going on. Everything else that's out there that we have looked at requires employees to be looking down at a screen, which is not what you want when you're trying to engage with the public. 
you know, the needs of customers today are so dramatically different than they were a decade ago, even five years ago. And you see this in expectations around speed of service, around connection to information, and the fact that Theatro gives employees on the sales floor access to systems without having to use screens, catches them up with the customer walking in with their own smartphone. One of the things we're most excited about is the ability to leverage knowledge across the enterprise. So for example, in the future, I know we'll be able to have employees in one store with a question, be able to ask that question to any employee in the business. So if it's product information, if it's about policies, if it's about anything that they need help with, they're not limited to just their store. They can speak to anyone in the enterprise at any given time and get the information they need. When you think about the retail industry, the future of what it can do, the Android is going to be a huge part of that. I can't imagine looking out 10 years from now and seeing something else other than this type of solution in every employee's ear. This is something that I expect every retailer will adopt. And without a doubt, it will change the way that they're working with their employees and that their employees are working with their customers. I, I would absolutely recommend the Android and others. And frankly, I would question executive leaders of uh, retail companies that are not seriously considering this and, and wondering how they're going to keep the future without this type of solution. So thank you very much for your time and attention. And I tell you that we are humbled and proud to be working with the brands that we are working with. And we look forward to earning uh, more business from additional customers who want to learn more about some market concepts. So I think we're out of time for this. Uh, we're out of time, so uh, thanks everybody. I appreciate it. This panel is titled Beyond Intranets, and we're going to try to tackle the problem of headquarters to store communication and uh, what that means for compliance and actually execution of the best practices we want in our brands. So uh, our panelists, to my right, Wayne Selman is Director of Sales for Foco Retail, okay, and uh, is going to, you're going to understand it where Foco Retail does in a couple of minutes. Molly Plunker is a principal with Two Hemispheres, who works with customers in this particular area. And to my right, Miguel Carrillo is from uh, Converse, and he is director of retail. So we're going to dig into a few questions here that uh, we've got scripted out to keep us focused and on time. Um, and I'll start with the first one. And Wayne, I'm going to pick on you. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Want to move over? Okay, so everybody can see this, I assume. All right, you can hear us? We're hearing you? Good. So a recent study, this just came out uh, this past week, actually, in RIS News, uh, which was also sponsored by Coco Retail, found that one of the biggest obstacles in preventing retailers from executing store operations is stores and associates of stores having unclear guidelines about what to do. This sounds pretty fundamental, uh, but they identified a real, real serious communications problem. Uh, directions from headquarters, uh, limited visibility in real time to knowing what I'm supposed to do based on those guidelines. Um, so Wayne, I want to ask you, you know, what's causing this problem out there and what do we do about it? Uh, that's a great question. So I think a big part of what's causing this inefficiency or this gap is related to a couple of things. So we think that uh, what we've seen and what we've heard from our clients that make that transition is really their uh, reliance still on email, intranets, uh, older technology, where uh, it's not a two-way communication. So what we do at Coco, we're, we're an internal communication platform that allows for headquarters and the stores to communicate in a more streamlined fashion. And it helps with disseminating information like guidelines or directives that you want to execute in some of the schools, right? And, and validate that that has happened and it's worked out well. Um, when you have email, 
I don't know if you ever tried to throw a file to a multi-chain uh, conversation. Things lose confidence, and it's hard to get an action on multi that We might require some really specific insights on how to fix something so that they can get back to it. And, you know, we've heard a lot of conversations about the whole thing, <coughs> looking at a tablet or looking at a device and not being able to set things up on the mind. Sometimes the clients actually see what the store looks like before they actually can see that you can them. So making sure that your stores are ready to give you that experience is critical uh, as a doctor. And then as they need updates, yes. Using a tablet might be distracting, but it would be quicker to get that done in the back office off the floor as they do. So those are some of the things. It's to that one time that I got it, but I didn't have access to it in the first place, so I didn't know. Or is it is it an ongoing kind of thing? It's talking more policy guidelines, that kind of thing. Um, it can be simple feedback on um, an ex uh, a change of uh, product and stuff. It could be something that needs to happen up. now. It needs to be needs to happen now. Absolutely. Absolutely right. You can't wait. Okay. Okay, Molly. So your firm has worked directly with customers in this area. You focused on. I mean, what do you what do you what are you finding? And what, what are you doing? Well, you know, we're finding consistently that execution is really only as good as the training and direction that you're giving the field teams. And um, an example would be a, a recent project we spent eight months um, working with stakeholders within the organization to establish things as simple as brand standards and visual standards. And you think that would be something that everybody has in place, but oftentimes those are inconsistent elements within an organization. And so the really establishing a foundation, I think, for those principles and a platform from which you can spring from so that you can establish that two-way communication loop and provide feedback that is relevant and great upon is highly critical. Okay. So Miguel, you're an operator, right? You're, you're in the thick of this, right? Oh. So not directly in stores, but yeah. I mean, Congress has different uh, different methods, uh, different uh, channels of distribution, some stores, direct digital, right? Right. Um, I think- How do you guys have well, it's a, it's a good question as well. I think, and to give you guys a little bit more context, because I agree with these guys, and um, basically my division um, is in charge of all global partners, so distributors and licenses. So we don't really operate in the marketplace. We actually are a step behind, which makes the whole task a little bit more challenging. Because we, we don't have the power to say, okay, this is what we need to do, and really call people and say, hey, okay, get it done, right? We have to tell a partner, and that partner tells their people. So um, that is definitely challenging, and I think we encountered uh, the same the same challenges that we were uh, saying. I think there was a, like, an incredible amount of noise out there in terms of communication. So I think there was a techn technological barrier in terms of like everybody had different different platforms, uh, hardware, etc., or forms. Uh, the other one was communication, so communication, that was a barrier, and the form of communication. The other one was um, um, also the physicality of it, like basically because our head office is in Boston, but our distributors are around the world, we're operating in more than 40 countries, it was incredibly challenging because um, somebody spoke English, the other one Spanish, the other one was Russian. So the language was a barrier, the, the, just the fact that they were really far away, um, and uh, I'm guessing I wanted to talk about another one, but basically these barriers um, basically make that, that work really, really hard. So I agree with Mom, you have to get everybody um, really up to base camp and say, okay, these are the foundations, these are the basics. From there on, we really start getting tools like, like local government as well to really start uh, rolling this out and say, okay, just let your standard guys get it done. Let me easy way to that whole part of It's true, it's true. I think I'm exactly not not sponsored or anything, or anything, but I think for us it was the right solution because I would not only do a tech as a gadget and a recipient, it had to be uh, useful for our strategic priorities and our vision. Right. So that it's interesting to say that it's the same study, right? Uh, which is available online, it's just came out part of found that if we take this whole community out here that we're talking to, uh, the superset, with all of their stores, that only 33% of them actually have deployed right now, at this time. 
doing with mobile technology for some of the research that Chris is, some of Chris's eye opening observations there. What's up with that? And, um, and, and where, how's that, how should that play a role? Well, it definitely has an impact on, on the way for the different infections that used to happen. Right? So when you have an infrastructure that's um, adverse to mobile applications, whether it's from a field perspective or within the schools, you can definitely see that it has an impact on the efficiency of the business. It's mobile for a reason, right? It's supposed to be able to uh, take on the, uh, the elements that rigid stand uh, desktop computers can now move around or uh, help. So just the power of the technology at your disposal, it's underutilized in, in many instances. And I think that's been uh, highlighted a lot of that um, in that uh, stores are, are you know, where, where mobile field teams have about 75% adoption, where in stores it's close to 80%. So even talking about store managers not being able to communicate effectively with their head office. So that is a huge opportunity. So this is about standardizing that information, having it available, whatever those points are. Absolutely. And you know, to Chris's point, we don't want to see the system stand there and like this all the time. But if there's critical information I need, and I need to have it this morning before I go out and, and you know, at random and start doing things, right? I, I've got access to it. And it's going to look the same as if I'm in the back office. So right, that's important. It's not like that when you're doing modeling. Especially. So there's an element of communication is important, but there's also this compliance piece where you need to make sure and you report back to head office what that looks like, what the most stores look like, how 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 long does it take you to get that done, and where can you improve upon that? And sometimes it just starts with how extensible is this capability for Okay. Well, what are you saying with your on this particular Where we think we need to, to engage with 
start to sort of sign this up with exciting consumer experiences. I mean, we've talked about it throughout these days. Um, that's, where, that's where we need to be. I mean, people uh, really want human connection, exciting stuff, but if you don't get those standards up to, up to the standard, it's very difficult. So it's a challenge, but, but um, I think we're getting there. I, I, we also like something um, in our team that's basically that it's not only Google um, or like a mobile type of platform, but it's also that we can uh, use it with a desktop sort of version. So it is also a little bit more agile for us, like from HQ to see and say, hey, we need to do this, this is the task, boom, send it through, and then people just do it. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I've found that about, you know, when I talk to my customers who tend to be specialty retail and general merchandise, customers, when you talk to the network teams, I mean, they'll tell you that, you know, if they're out there at A&P malls and typical venues, that about 30% of the locations they have have poor last mile of human connectivity and you know, disruptions and so on. And he says, well, why can't you fix that? Well, because you know, the guy that owns the mall wants 15 grand to you know, fix that problem. And you know, we're just not willing to do it. We don't know how long we're going to be there. So the problem persists. And you know, we're talking about a lot of this like, you know, executable, actionable stuff. But not only when we work with your clients, I mean, what about Compliance, right? We've got a brand. We've got a set of kind of standards we want to follow. Um, how do you know? I've got a summer percent, large percent of seasonal, you know, part-time help. You know, 85 to 110 percent turnover, perhaps, maybe higher, depending on the, the brand, right? How are they? How are you helping them? And what are they doing with technology to, to help improve compliance? Well, I, I think what's been most effective is to leverage the tools that they're using to encourage compliance in a way that rewards good behavior, if you will. So uh, making sure that we're motivating and empowering the staff to be compliant and that there are some reports that don't yet and that they have something to be proud of and um, we're, we're making sure to share best practices across the, the matrix of the field team and, and that way they're being recognized for their work and they're not just checking a box. We want them to have full ownership and feel engaged with the tool and, and response and take responsibility. What, what, you know, what is this an issue you guys? <coughs> yeah, I mean, so yeah. Is there a technological yeah. answer a conference for that? Or um, I think it's a it's a mix of many things. I mean we, we have to do better things, better playbooks, standards, etc. Right? Use platforms such as Floco to deploy them, to get them out there. And then do a lot of follow up and say, okay, we're going to focus on our original model and say the uh, 20 percent uh, that are basically uh, the, the real deal for us in terms of those key doors. Those need to be really, really good doors. And uh, the rest, we, we need a combination of like tracking them, but they don't have the internal capabilities to be tracking by door. Like we have too many doors out there. We have more than 400 doors. And these countries, so that's only DTC plus wholesale channels plus e-commerce. It's just impossible to have to have really good compliance and be like have an eye on everything. But these sort of platforms really give you a better tool to feel closer there in the marketplace uh, in remote locations such as South Africa or Russia. Right, because the venues are going to be right. right? So, yeah. yeah. So the compliance is key. I mean. The brand, um, really, like the store is, is one of those, or should be one of those uh, really important, uh, powerful um, media um, opportunities that we have for the brand. And they're the face of the brand. They have to be spot on. They have to be perfect. Right, right. If we don't get them right, we're basically failing. I mean, it's like seeing an ad with a, like a black ink on top of it. I mean, it's, it's a mess, right? So we need to get those standards up to a to bit. Right, so the service levels might vary depending on the venue. But I've got a brand that I want to get, a lot of this brings back consistency, isn't it? Right, so I'm a brand, I've got flagship stores, I've got full line T stores, I've got outlet stores, I've got pop up locations that happen seasonally, and I'm experimenting with concept stores, right? So I might be asking my folks to provide different levels of service.